Patty. Here. Matt. Here. Kelly. Here. Lori here. Ken. Here. All right. With regards to the agenda, uh, I'd like to take up item number one. Take all. Township attorney filed an appeal regarding that issue. So we're waiting on that. Uh, item number two, the presentation will be by Vince Pizak. There you go. P-I-A-S-C-I-K. Okay, we're gonna add item number four, which will be some cog. Uh, invasive, invasive species grant. And then, go ahead. And then we'll add on um, planning uh, commission update on um, our engineers' report. That should be an What's that? That's just a normal. Yes, that just, that just was an oversight. That's usually in the page. Motion to present this. Amendment. Okay. Matt makes a motion to accept as amended. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve consent agenda. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as agenda as presented. I'll second that. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Roll call vote, please. Oh, yeah. Look, okay, I even have it down. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, yes. Ken? Uh, yes. Patty? Yes. Matt? Yes. Kelly? Um, Yes, I would like to point out that um, there was a question in the public comments at the last meeting regarding if there was a roll call for a consent agenda okay. at the last meeting, and there was. It's documented in there. Minutes. And declare that okay, open session. Anyone wishing to address the board regarding agenda items only? Moving on to unfinished business. There is not any unfinished business. Moving on to new business. Presentation on tablet use by Vince Pizek. Yeah, the floor is all yours. All right. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for having me tonight, guys. I appreciate it. Um, so what we're what we're looking at here um, from the information that I gathered, unfortunately I didn't get to talk to you when you actually came in. Right. Um, we're looking we're looking to do five tablets. Okay, um, we have a couple different options for you guys for those tablets. Um, the name of the tablet is called the LG G Pad. Okay, um, with this particular device, um, you're looking at a monthly reoccurring cost of seventy five dollars before taxes, okay? That's the total with the five units, okay? $50 upfront cost, which covers the sales tax. Usually the regular cost on that is $72. So we're gonna go ahead and actually credit you guys $22 just for doing business with us in store. Mm -hmm. um, you also have another, and actually that's with a zero year service agreement too, okay? So no contract with that. You have a second option too that you can do with the service agreement. Monthly reoccurring charges at $75 before tax, but the upfront cost, we'd be looking at $49.99 per tablet. So $249 for all five of those devices going that way. So those are the two choices that we can give you for cost of these mm -hmm. devices. Now, the main thing is, is we wanna figure out how will you guys be using these devices and how are they gonna benefit you guys. Um, basically, obviously the tablets function using Wi-Fi, um, they do come with one gigabyte of Sprint data service on there. Okay, so if you wanted to use them outside of the building, you could still use them outside of the building. Do you guys have Wi-Fi 
inside yes. the building here? Okay, cool. So that's gonna work out for you. What type of documents and what type of paperwork are you guys gonna need to use? That's, that's really one of the main questions. Should I grab one of yeah. It just the amount of the pa uh, the paperwork that goes into okay. making the packets, and Lori's going to grab that. Uh, okay, very um, good. Now, I, I, I don't think everybody knows that um, there are other townships that do use the tablets instead of the abundance of paper. We get charged 12 cents a copy. That's a lot of money. Just for the copy machine use. That's not the ink, that's not the paper, that's not the time to put these packets together. And it's hundreds of dollars. So I happen to call, you know, go into the Sprint store and they're nice enough to come out here to kind of do a little presentation and what it would be to benefit us in the long run all the way around. But Lori has, this is just one packet. This is yeah. not the, uh, this is not the norm I would like to so wow. Thankfully. Now, do you guys use like Excel, Microsoft Word? Is that what you guys are using for this? Right. Okay. So the, the biggest benefit to these tablets, those applications, you can download those at a $0 cost. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to cost you anything additional to have and use these documents. Right. Now, if it required you to have a certain paper that wasn't by Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel Sprint has a program where you can take those documents, you upload them into their system. There is an additional monthly fee for that. I couldn't find the cost on that today. I believe it's in the $15 range, but more than likely, probably use like Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel so we can keep it free and, me, I can't and, and, keep the and keep the cost down. If, if I could interject, we do. Sure. We do. I can't hear. We do utilize Ameriscan, and we have our upload our packets on there, okay. which the community can access, and okay. we can also have the board members access that also. Okay. So okay. I'm sure that's it's already out there. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's something that we're going to be able to help you guys out with. That shouldn't be an issue at all. Okay. Okay. Um, now, as far as other stuff that you can do, uh, social networking, I don't know if you guys use any like Facebook or LinkedIn or any stuff. Okay. Um, GPS, turn by turn navigation on these devices. So when you are outside the building, you can use that. Um, email, sending, receive. Um, you know, you can print from these devices wirelessly if you do have wireless printers that are here. So same thing, cut, cut back on costs a little bit. It does support an external SD card up to 128 gigabytes for storage. Mm -hmm. The devices do come with eight gigabytes internal, okay? So it's up to you what you guys wanna put on these devices and store, and if you need more storage, put an SD card in it. Um, we are also offering you guys uh, <laughs> cases and screen protectors, obviously at a discounted deal compared to what you would pay in store. Um, usually what we charge for a case and a screen protector is $60. What we're willing to do for you guys here for this would be for $40 for each. So cost would be $200. That's if you needed those for each individual uh, tablet, okay? Um, another optional service that we offer is equipment protection for these devices. Let's say something were to happen, we drop it on the ground, the screen cracks, it's $13 additional per device. That's optional. If you guys feel like you're good with it, maybe just get the case and the screen protector to help you out. Is that thirteen dollars a month, or is that's that that's correct? Okay. Yes. For each or for all of them inside. For each, for each individual, yes. Now, one question I had asked uh, you earlier on the phone today is if you had a projector. Right. Um, right. Now, this is totally optional for you guys. This is something you know we wanted to throw at you to see what you guys thought about it. But Sprint has a device. It's called the Sprint Live Pro. What it does, it'll project. So maybe you have a meeting like this, and instead of writing stuff down and passing notes out, you can present it to the whole crowd here, okay? There is additional cost for that, okay? Um, the monthly reoccurring charges for this unit is $45.25. That would come with three gigabytes of data service, okay? But since you have Wi-Fi here, you can connect that device via Wi-Fi and use it unlimited, okay? Um, the key features of that obviously is gonna be a projector, so we can maybe put it on the wall over here for you guys. Um, comes with a hotspot. You can connect up to eight Wi-Fi enabled devices to it. So that goes with phones, ta uh, you know, other tablets or other devices that have that capability. Okay, um, let's see. 
yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what we have. Do you guys have other questions for me? Um, when I, I did email Brett when we were discussing this, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, because I, is there some way we can use these devices for a couple months? And he did state in an email to me that we can use them, try them yes. for two months to see how Yeah, the cool thing is, is with, like with a business account, you, do, you guys do get a 60 day trial period. That's the difference between like our consumer and business. So you do get that full trial just to try it out. Now, and by doing this, you're signing, if you, if you go with the first option, which is a zero year agreement, you're not locked into any agreements to stay with Sprint. So if you guys wanted to, let's say seven months down the road, it didn't work out for you guys, you can go ahead and cancel these devices out. You just pay the remainder cost of the tablets, okay? <clears throat> Which would be what? Um, it depends. Uh, how, yeah, it depends on the it depends on how far you guys are in. Because like I said, you got that, it's, it's a $15 cost per unit per month. So, okay. So if you're if if we go in six months, we just take the difference out from there. So then after the sixty days, we're only responsible for the just for usage. That's usage. that's all that Sprint's going to charge you for. Now the benefit too, usually they would charge an activation fee of thirty six dollars per unit. But as a business account, that's something that they will completely waive for you guys too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind it's kind of almost risk free. Go ahead and try them out and see if it works out for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, when do I get back with you or can best I get thing back would be if you, you can or? at least you know give me a call tomorrow I'm gonna be there all day from 10 to 8 mm -hmm. and then we can go ahead and you know run the application and make sure we get you guys approved and good to go and then what I can do even I can even come all the way I'm sorry I could even come all the way back here with those devices get them all set up get them activated show you how to use them download the proper stuff that you guys need for that and like just like she was talking about if maybe there's an application for that service that we need so everything's working for you guys mm -hmm. Ken, do you have any questions not as of yet but do you have <laughs> any kind of a uh, total value of what these tablets would be like you say in six months if we decide that we don't like the service when will you have that calculated? Monthly? Yeah, the, well, the, I mean, each each device retail price goes for two ninety nine ninety nine is what that would cost over the period of twenty four months. Okay. With regard to the taxes, we are tax exempt, so is okay. There a, so if a portion it, of the taxes that we actually have to pay, like a that's a of that's those? a good question. That's something I'll have to get back to you on. But okay. more than likely, same thing. Sprint has a lot of different programs out there. We just have to talk to the right person and probably be able to make that work for you guys. I could okay. give you that proper answer tomorrow. Though. Okay. Okay. All right. Does Thank anybody you. else have any questions for for Vince? I'm good for now. No. Good. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for coming. Yes, here. of I course. Appreciate no it. problem. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening tonight. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. So, did anybody just want a discussion? Does anybody want to make a motion for a trial period? Do we want to move on to next item? Did we price them anywhere else? I did not. Did nope. you? Did not. Good we might want to look into that. Okay. Like Verizon, being that we're getting. Yeah, we got some business going on with Verizon. They may offer you a nice option. We'll get okay. better reception. No. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to just keep it as discussion for now. Uh, look into some other services in the area, um, such as Verizon. What, what else do we have? AT&T. AT um, what does IRA use? IRA has, um, they have, not laptops, what are the things called? The other things called? Tablet. Ta the tablet? Not tablets. Um, iPads. IPads, thank you. And the only reason they did iPads is because the fire department already had those because they looked into the tablets as well. Did it, what, did it say what size screen? I couldn't find that. The seven inch. The seven inch. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. We're, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Thank I you. We're, they're asking we're, the screen size. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you have one by chance here that we could look at? Actually, no. We left, we left it at the store. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Vince, question. Is there a, a time restraint on this? Do we have 30 days to make sorry, a decision? Can you come back up to the yeah, podium because we're told sorry. that you can't yeah. hear unless you're at the yes. podium. Really, really, yeah. I mean, if, if we can at least get it started tomorrow, that would be awesome. But, I mean, our promotions change as of the 10th. But most of the time, the stuff gets extended. So I won't know that information until tomorrow, probably around 2, 3 o'clock. Okay. okay. So, but that's possible. Okay. Call other right. Other sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. All Thank right. You so Thank much. you guys. Thank you. Any other discussion regarding that? All right. Moving on to item number two. Approve resolution R two zero one five dash zero seven policies and procedures of Township Assessor's Office. Um, from Barb's letter, it appears that the AMAR audit is requiring that they have this um, resolution in place, probably similar to what the FOIA Act had required. And all this resolution is is um, outlining what their hours are, where their office is located, um, how you can contact them. It's pretty much basically their hours, their office hours. So it's just a, a policies and procedures of the Township Assessor's Office with their office hours. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution R-2015-07, Policies and Procedures of Township Assessor's Office, as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? <coughs> Being none. All in favor? Roll call. Ken? No. Patty? Yes. Matt? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Lori? Yes. is required by the aim of audit. Um, moving along to item number five, SEMCOG Invasive Species Grant, Matt. I presented this to the board. I received from Artie Bryce and Clay Township Supervisor the opportunity for our residents and our businesses in Cotchaville Township to be um, part of a grant. Southeastern Michigan Council of Government, SEMCOG, which we're a member of, is um, seeking a grant with the help of the DNR, State of Michigan. And I'll just read basically what I already put in the, in the uh, email, was it'll cover the government or private properties, it covers the costs with no match requirements. Um, it's a two-year grant, it pays for treating, cutting, and burning twice. The only thing the property only has to do is sign an agreement saying they will assess and maintain the Phragmites after the two years. Basically, as we all know about Phragmites and the issues, and I, and I know the pros and cons of the chemicals, just from the few classes that I've gone through with Clay Township, I know some are for, some are against, but it is an evasive species. They're trying to get it under control, and they're trying to help residents in, in this area and or businesses in this area. Um, with the permission of the board, I'd like to talk to Southeastern Gas even, which are neighbors of some of you, I know, um, and I know they have some Phragmites on there, and I thought it would be nice of them even to get involved in this process too. Um, no cost to anybody other than to say yes, them come out, assess it, uh, take care of it, and if we get the grant, and then you maintain it thereafter. Um, that's basically what it is, it's that simple. Uh, so Artie asked me to present this. I asked for it. It's here. The process would be to, if you were interested as a resident, to just contact the office. Uh, I made a format where it's just basically your name, address, and approximately the estimated acreage so that they can present that in a package form, describe it in a grant, and send it out and see what happens. And then we'd be notified if it's a thumbs up or thumbs down. He needs that by October 1st. 
And this is something that the board doesn't need to vote on. It's just for anybody that's interested can put in their interest by giving their name and address. Correct. Okay. Was there anywhere the, that there's a description of what access, uh, accessing and maintaining the frags after the two years consist of and what it could entail? The way Art described it to me Tuesday when I spoke with him, Tuesday after the holiday here, he said it's just like dandelion, spot spring. Now, obviously, it depends on what I would surely believe on the size of your property and the amount of frag monies you have. Um, last year, uh, Supervisor Faselli had a meeting with the people that do the Parsons Island uh, control, the gentleman. He came here and spoke. I know there are a few residents here that joined. I did, and I have my two side ditches and my front ditch. I got involved with the Clay Township. That's why I was involved in this email, this mass email. I sprayed, and then once a year I just go out. So September is the time they suggest you spray, and you just spray them. Literally, it was an hour, and I walked them down the ditch. If I saw Fragmite, I sprayed it, and that was that. So I don't have the big plumes, but I see a plant this tall, and I hit it, and that was all I had to do. And he said it's like doing dandelion spot spray. You bought the spray, or that's furnished? I, I did buy the chemicals. Um, they do offer it through the Clay Township grant that they do, and, and again, that, they sent that all out in August. Um, people that join it, you see all the emails on here. They sell the products to people, and it's a grant that covers this area, and we're all under that grant. Uh, or not the grant, I'm sorry, um, the permit. Under the, the right, because we're under offer. the collaboration with the other communities. Between right. them. Thank you. So I'm under that when, when he purchased the chemicals. And the chemicals, as much as I use, will last me four or five years. Um, they're, they're in a plastic container. He went through the whole process how to use it. I mix it up as he described. I walked through a gallon sprayer, and I didn't use a gallon sprayer on my property. And I think it was $100. $100 is what it cost me. And it'll last me for, for me, it'll last me four years at least, I'm sure. But I, again, I, do, I have very minimal. But I didn't want them to get huge, nor to my neighbors. So it's just something offered. Um, if, if need be, we can do more homework. But, um, Get less than a year. Did you notice that? Yes. Less coming back. I think. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's the goal. And so, as they say, um, I don't want to give it, it's opinions. They don't believe we'll ever beat it. Um, in dealing with the new park, when they were out of the state here this last early mm -hmm. summer, talking to the people that helped us with the park, they said they actually are looking at biological uh, means of trying to control it right now. <clears throat> But, you know, who knows what that'll be. They're going to bring over grasshoppers or whatever it is, whatever this biological <laughs> means. is another, my opinion, another problem. But um, it, it, they're just trying to do it because we do know it does affect your properties and your neighbor's properties if, if all you have is frag money. It, it's not a plus, and they saw that on Hurston's Island and so forth. So it's just something they're trying to do to get under control and offering it to the residents. Thank you. And if somebody's interested, can they contact you or Clay Township? Well, they, they want us to contact the offices, and that's why I added the last shape here. Okay. Um, and then I would ask the um, office personnel to have it, and then just come to the township here. Either give your name, address, and the estimated acreage, and or call it in, and then we'll submit it, and we'll keep you posted as to how it develops. Enough? Yeah, let your friends know, your neighbors know, so we can. Can't Thank hurt to guys. try. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Kat. Moving along to item I, engineer's report. Oh, I'm like, where's you? Playing hide and seek Good evening. Um, I believe you have a copy of my September 2nd report. Just going over the items really quick. The SAW grant, uh, no change since last time. We're still looking for a contractor that we can sub so we can get better price from the bidding uh, from the bids that we received um, water system mapping is on hold still the water park I just received the contract de declaration affidavits today we, we normally ask them to sign a couple of documents that they uh, they don't owe any sub contractors and they paid all the their subs and they finish the work and all that and uh, I do have a, a report from my inspection uh, department so I'm gonna put all that together and send you a letter recommending closeout and I believe their final payment was on your 
consent judgment, uh, consent agenda today. So we can close the project. And uh, you can take that packet and send it to the DQ and notify them that the project is completed. And if there are any issues, they will notify us. The uh, review projects of Verizon Tower, uh, as you guys know, the Board of Trustees in St. Clair County approved the application. And the, the next stage is engineering. So we're waiting on them to submit engineering uh, construction documents for review uh, so they can get, get their uh, building permit. FiberTech is withdrawn again, and uh, no move on any grants. Um, I'll take any questions. With regards to the park, I received an email yesterday that the St. Clair River Binational Public Advisory Council would like to present Cottonville Township with the St. Clair River Restoration Partnership Award. Uh, for the Cottraville Riverfront Restoration Project. Uh, they will be presenting this award at next October's meeting. So that's yeah. another plus for the park. That's good. Um, anybody else have any, anything for Sir Matt? No. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Ken, Planning Commission update. Uh, Planning Commission has just been reviewing everything for the master plan, trying to see if there's any changes that need to be done. Uh, looked into a couple of possible differences in ordinances, uh, which haven't materialized as of yet. But the uh, master plan is the major thing that we've been working on over there, trying to get that completed. Probably within the next two meetings it will be. Any questions? No. Moving on to public comment. Anyone wishes to adjust the board? Mm -hmm. I'm back. <laughs> I was in Texas for the last last uh, meeting, so I missed it. Okay. I have a couple comments. One, I would like. Uh, when we call for public account, account, you know, comments or whatever, or anything, I would wish that people would speak up a little more. You can't hear very well in the back of the room. Okay. But now I have a question, and it was never addressed. We, our treasurer, quit because she was not a resident. This may be an old subject. I may have missed it. Okay, and that was because it's in the, in the, the state law, okay, that you have to be a, a resident. Uh, Kelly had the same problem, and I don't know if that was corrected or not. And as always, my usual thing on Wednesday, I look at the voice. I'm not looking for the obituaries to see if my name's in there yet, okay? But there's an article again today in there that says, the reasons for removal of a township uh, resident or official. And one of them was being convicted of a drunken, drunken uh, driving thing, also residents. So if that was good enough, and we, as one, some board members said, was good enough to have our last treasurer resign because that was the proper rule. I'd like to know what is happening with Ms. Kelly uh, in the same thing, because again, it's nothing personal, but if we're gonna follow the rules, it should be standard for everybody, okay? And she had made a comment too that she was going to repay the township for her time missed, and I don't know if she did, and I would like to know that. And number another one of my comments on here was, uh, that I put down real quick, uh, that uh, oh, space my right. Anyways, it was uh, in regards to this uh, agenda or whatever. We I would like to. Oh yeah, when we're leaving or we have a 
a question. Is there some way, and I'm willing to start it with anybody here in this room or anybody else, we have meetings, special meetings, are posted on the door, but it's hard to get to these special meetings and everybody can't go by every day. So I would like to start what we used to call a round robin system. That's where like maybe we can have somebody that lives close by, check the doors. If they find there's a special meeting, call one person. That could be me. Then I would call two people and tell them that there's a special meeting for what. Then those two people could call two more people each, okay, and so on. So that we could be at the meeting and know what's more what's going on because these notes here don't tell us actually what was said or what was done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the board? Okay, moving on to let's see. <clears throat> with addressing the comments that were made at last month's meeting. Uh, the kayak launch, I looked into the kayak launch with the county. Patty was with me when we t went down there. And if we get the kayak launch, we would also have to, we would be required to provide parking as well as a walkway because you have to have all a handicap accessible. So we'd have to have parking for it. We'd have to provide a walkway to it and we'd have to maintain it. So at this point, we don't have the funding for that. So we're gonna hold off on that. Because um, the county would provide the launch, but we would have to buy, provide the maintenance and the parking and all that jazz. Uh, uh, with regards to setting up an appointment with Tony Spadafore, I had, after that meeting, I had some residents come in that had some concerns. Uh, so I was gathering some factual documentation and based upon my findings, uh, I did contact Mr. Spadafore through a text requesting a meeting with him regarding our parks for next week and also I will be contacting our parks and rec board regarding the condition and the maintenance of our parks. I'd also like to thank the Marine City Fire Department and Chief uh, Vandebush's son for coming out here when I happened to walk out to the park to look at it. I noticed that the benches were not suitable for sitting on them and I asked the fire department if they could come out and they hosed them all off and cleaned them within two days. So I was grateful for that. Um, I'm sure everybody else was so they could sit down. Uh, with regards to Mr. Spadafore's comments as to Sandy wanting to bring up a matter regarding her uh, suing the Township Board for Discrimination, Sandy spoke with me and claimed that she never asked Mr. Spadafore to speak on her behalf and she has no intention of suing the township. With regards to my residency, uh, the Court of Appeals is looking into uh, whether or not I violated anything for leaving the township. Uh, as we stated before, first time I left the township, my house was sold within two months and we had intentions on building. So moved out of the township because there wasn't anything available. I was gone for five months, moved back in. Moved out this time because accommodations for my son. I actually just went and looked at a house today that I'm putting an application in that's inside Cutchville Township. Uh, what else was for our public comments last month? Um, that one. Uh, with regards to the comment with Mr. Santos, I have a signed letter from Connie Turner stating that. She did not receive any money and that Mr. Santos um, had said that first it was cash, then it was a check, and she wasn't so sure. He wasn't sure, and so that's, we have no evidence that he placed money into the drop box, and none of the employees at that time received money from Mr. Santos. So that's where we stand with that. Uh, the water assessments, with the question with regards to that, Patty, did you want to answer that one? Um, I know that Plant Moran, with regards, changed those account numbers for some reason. I, when I'm getting back with them with them this week, I will find out a more definite answer as to why that was done with them. Um, but all the, like um, Vayu had mentioned, that 
on the budget it stated all water district four will we change that Lori is that what you changed the other day where it shows water district three and four on that account number but all the funds are going into the appropriate assessment water district so they're not all water district four so water district three's payments are going in threes and fours are going in fours and that was corrected on the screen it says three and four so on that report it's taken care of right right exactly so that's what it was it was a uh, error in how it was put in on the screen but the funds are definitely split into the correct account numbers and on a different report it definitely showed that three had way more money in it than four did so we have it separated right. correctly and we had another resident that asked if a roll call was made which I addressed earlier on the consent agenda which it was um, a resident who claimed that nobody came out to check her complaint regarding was it flooding? The, was flooding. Uh, talked to Bill, and he said yes, he did speak with them, and he spoke with the neighbor as well. He took aerial views, went out there, and the flooding issue was upon. Other than that, he didn't see anything that was in violation. Uh, anything you wanted to elaborate on that? And um, with regards to her rising taxes, uh, spoke with Barb, and she said that. The reason why she could see her taxes rose was because the consumer price index rose 1.26%. Um, and that's on that. And I would like to uh, address the Mantra buildings looking good. I guess we got to start calling it a different name. But I love the way that the LTC roll, they, the maintenance that they're doing on that is spectacular. I like how they. Um, kept the color theme, you know, the same to Manor the Manor building and uh, it's just not an eyesore and I've had many, many compliments on the way it looks and a, a ton of questions as to when it's going to open and they're going to, and I said when we get to that part then I'm sure they'll notify us. Yeah. So I'm excited about that too. Um, and with that, do I have, anybody's got anything? No. Okay, motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 8.06 p.m. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Have a good evening, everybody.